Okay, let's see how to replicate a VM from source site to target site. I have a production site, as I said, in Sydney, New South Wales. That's a production data center. And I want to replicate this very important server called server one to my DR site, which is right here in Perth, Western Australia. So I'll go to site recovery tab right on my vra1 which is in my production site or source site and go to view details asking for vcenter credentials for the remote site so i will provide credentials all good so now let's go to replications and as you can see outgoing and incoming two options what i want outgoing means vm will be replicated from vcsa to vcsa2 means in my case from sydney to perth wi or from production site to dr site or <laughs> from source to target VCSA is the one is the vCenter where I have this server and I want this to replicate to a target site which has vCenter called VCSA2 so I want to do outgoing incoming is reverse if I want Sydney to be a disaster recovery site for Perth like vice versa right or a combination of terminology. Some individual VMs running here, some individuals running VMs running there, Sydney protecting Perth VMs, Perth is protecting Sydney VMs, or in other words, for some VMs, one site is the source, other site is the target, and for some different VMs, you know, the target site becomes source and source becomes target. Anyway, let's not get, get get you confused. So outgoing is the one I want. So if I say new, here I can select my virtual machines that I want. I want server one from production, right? I want to protect this. Target site is VCSA2. Automatically assign vSphere application server, which is by default, it's just one. So it doesn't make any difference. I want to keep the disk format same as source. And destination data store, I would like to use this. Where it will land, where the replica will land. RPO or recovery point objective after how many uh, minutes I wanted to perform sync. So in my case, maybe 15 minutes, it's fine. Every 15 minutes at minimum, it's every five minutes. I'm okay with every 15 minutes. How many instances or point in time instances I need, it, I want to get to be restored so that I can roll back. And for how many days? I want to keep just uh, two instances per day for last three days. Because let's say my data is so dynamic that anything after that become useless to me. The better to, for me to, you know, so for me, it's very important to data as latest as possible. Well, I mean, it depends on the type of server. Some servers, the rate of data change is not that much. And those, some servers like file servers or especially database servers, they change quite a lot, right? So it depends what RPO your organization, you know, can, can, uh, 
afford you know uh, what you can do for example don't forget it, it you need to consider what that time frame or it depends how much data they can afford to loss to afford to lose suppose if the rpo is four hours right and now i sync a vm and sync it after four hours get synced again and before the next cycle disaster strikes let's say after three hours or three and a half hour disaster strikes but before the third time of sync so in this case all i have is three hours or three and a half hours old data in my dr site right so your organization should have agreed should have a proper rpo and rto timings that they agree on and based on that you keep the settings okay so recovery point objective again lower rpo reduce potential data loss but requires more resources of course and how many instances i want retained replication instances are converted to snapshots during recovery and replication of existing is keep this in mind important point replication of existing vm snapshots is not supported so keep two instances for last three days and neighbor point time or maybe you know one day okay enable guest qnc so in this case if uh you know it's for virtual machine to support sequencing method so uh, they got it that stabilized way you know uh, like database or exchange it, it use right but it will take several minutes you know what it does it's slowly and gradually uh, it use volume shadow copy services and after that to ensure that it's it's all come you know it it takes the snapshot it's a sta stable state so slowly and gradually whatever uh is in place i would say a process is in place in the queue they got drains out may impact performance a little bit so that's why they are saying it may take several minutes and my effect rpo times you all right so make sure they want to use or not so in my case i'm okay with that and all looks good to me so finish now it's configuring a replication and while it's configuring a replication, yeah, state not active. That's right. As you can see, sync is in progress. So while the sync is happening, let me just pause the video and I'll be back when it's ready. All right, the replication is completed as you can see. And if we want, we can see a details here we can pause that application we can sync and trigger it manually let's see how does it looks like so if i go to my drv sphere and refresh
you see the VM is not shown here. And this is expected. If you go to menu and site recovery, and as you know, site recovery again, and then we go to view details. You see, uh, okay. Okay, just give me a second. I want to show you something. You see, incoming is one. And over there, outgoing is one. Because source site is outgoing and target site incoming, right? Let's see the details. Yeah, I need to authenticate because remember, I wanted to show you something, so I have canceled that. And replications. Oh, there is nothing outgoing, but in incoming, you see, it's all there. So if I select this VM and click recover, what would happen, it will start the recovery process and bring this VM up and running in target site. Okay. We will do this recovery, but not in this video. In this video, the purpose was to configure VM for replication and to show you how it's been done how to do it. One another important thing regarding the quincing as I mentioned. As I mentioned, uh, it used Microsoft Shadow Copy Services, which is triggered via VMware tools, which is installed under the machine. The idea behind quincing is is to make sure it flushes the dirty buffers for operating system in memory to cache as well as it makes the disk data disk of a virtual computer into a suitable state for backup. One important point though, and this is from my experience, it works best for Microsoft related products. I haven't seen any S issues as such. But personally, I have seen issues if you have some non-Microsoft product running. Let me give you in one example. It could be some other thing, but I have noticed or had some cases that if you have, for example, MySQL running on Windows Server, and sometime if you use Quincing, when you're taking VMware snapshot and you choose Quincing, um somehow we expect we experienced that the connection got flushed and people were complaining to the database connectivity for some reason i'm not saying it may happen in your case but just be careful and do some testing and see how it goes okay typically uh, when I do personally, when I take snapshots, right, I don't do quincing, right? Um, uh, and we know that VSS works very well for Microsoft related product, especially Exchange, Microsoft SQL and all. So no issue there. So this is what I wanted to mention. My two cents uh, from the field. Um, uh, as I said, it's not necessary that it may happen with you, but that's what I have noticed in some occasion. It could be something else, maybe a memory leak in the system, I, I don't know, but just be careful. And I would say test it if you have some non-Microsoft backend products running, okay? You can always uncheck that and just do the application without that and at the time of disaster recovery and if you want to do 
the planned failover it's very simple you shut down the source vm and once the source vm gets shut down it means it's in stable state right all data has already been committed and written to a disk and system is down so when system is down you do the final delta seek using vSphere application so whatever changes at the block level they are present at the source VM will be present at the destination or the target VM. And once that Delta sync completes, you can recover the target VM. So your target VM will be having exactly, number one, exactly same data as the source. It will be exactly in the same state as the source. Plus it will be in stable state because the VM was shut down and in source, correct? Don't forget you cannot sync the VM if it's powered off. Okay, it means VM needs to be powered on. However, recovery, at the time of recovery, it is better to power off the VM, right? Uh, to have, uh, VM needs to be powered off so that it can do all the final things and, and, and uh, perform recovery, which I will show you in next video. Okay, so take it easy and I will see you in next video.